All right, I'm here with Olivia, who's been doing some training with us for probably three months, four months now, and she came to us with severe knee problems. So, Olivia, tell us a bit about what your knee was like when you first came here. Uh, it was very sore. I struggled to do very easy things like walking up the stairs and just walking, running and bending it. It's yep. very tight. So, um, how did you sort of originate? Do you, can you recall? I was in a P um, health lesson and we were doing some gymnastics and I did just a simple jump and it just kind of just went twang. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the, some of the stuff we've been teaching you since you've been coming here? Um, core strength and like strengthening the muscles around the knee so it gets better <coughs> and a lot of like lunges and squats and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, yeah, cool. So did you, have, what exercise do you think have helped you the most? I think more like the squats and the lunges because they're more what we do in everyday life. Yep. Did you find it was hard even though, because how old are you at the moment? 14. So did you find it was like too hard for you to do? Um, no, not really. Just I went to basics and originally slowly got harder. Yeah, okay. So what are the key exercises you found for you that have really helped you with your, your knee? Um, I found the squats have been really helpful with strengthening everything around the knee, like the glute muscles and stuff. Yeah. And the lunges have also helped tighten everything up and loosen up the knee. Yep. Yeah. Um, what would you say, like, for someone who had knee pain and they were thinking about like doing some strength and stability training, but they'd never done it before, would you recommend it? Yeah, I would. It's starting off easy and then getting harder. It's very helpful. Yeah. And is the squatting movement the one that you found that was the hardest? Was it, yes, was it was it, the hardest. Was it the movement the way that you thought it was supposed to be done, the way you used to do it, versus what you do now? No, when I first started I was doing it completely wrong. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Yeah, and now you find it quite now easy? Now I can do it. Yeah, awesome. Alright, thanks Olivia, and uh, yeah, we'll try and get some videos of you um, doing some exercises uh, next week. Okay. Cool. There you go. Okay, um, this is a very, very short video about explaining um, taut versus tight. Um, this is one of those interesting phenomenon that I come across quite often um, that when we see people that are, appear to have tight hamstrings when it often is quite not the case. Um, all right, so I'm going to get right into the presentation for you. Um, all right, here we go. So, taut muscles versus tight. Now, usually what you'll see is this lordosis type um, posture where the pelvis is tipped forward here, like as you can see these arrows. And the arrow here is indicating the hamstrings at the back and the glutes are in a massive stretch. And um, also, it's so are the abdominals. They're also being stretched. The tight bits here are the um, back extensors and the hip flexors. This is uh, not new stuff. This is founded by I think Vladimir Yanda and you can read a lot of his books which are excellent to read um, and he goes into great detail. Now what happens is when most people examine the length of tension of the hamstrings they do a hamstring stretch and if it's with a straight leg it's more of a sciatic nerve stretch and quite often with a person like this you might find not always though but if there's like a lot of tension on the nerve and their knees are sort of falling into hyperextension you will find, not with, like I said, not all the time, but occasionally you do, that they have an appearance of like really tight um, hamstrings, but it's it's actually usually their hips are really not moving at all. There's there's no actual hip movement when you're lifting the leg. It's like the hips sort of are concreted still, and usually that person has sort of like tight low back as in this case sometimes piriformis syndrome. The sciatic nerve is really getting restricted. Um, so what you need to do with that person, even though that your hamstring stretch is telling you they're tight, you actually need to not stretch the hamstring and you need to actually stretch the hips. Remember at the front here, especially if you're on your postural examination, it comes up like this. Um, and, you know, and I've put here, range of motion can be as poor as 45 degrees. Um, and, and again, it's due to the poor hip movement creating massive neural tension on the sciatic nerve. So it's not muscle, it's more like nerve. So when you start stretching it, you actually tighten the nerve up even more and make the hip even tighter and it exacerbates all the problems. 
Now when we saw Olivia, this is exactly what we what I found on the very first time I saw her. Um, so to be sure, all I had to do was use a biofeedback thing like the picture on here, uh, placing it under her back and then doing the hamstring stretch. And if I wasn't really seeing a lot of movement through her hips, then I was fairly certain that that's what I was looking at. Um, again, with the postural examinations and testing her abdomen, abdominal strength, and she pretty much didn't have that either. Um, uh, and then watching the movement of the hip when you move the leg. So sort of just tracking the movement. Is the, is the hip, pelvis sort of coming into a posterior tilt as I lift that leg up, or is it just locked in anterior, like uh, tipped forward? Um, tied hamstrings, if, if she had tied hamstrings, the back would flatten almost instantly. The minute I lift the leg, it would have to, hardly move at all. Um, the person with weak hamstrings, um, it doesn't move till quite late. Um, and there's a very sort of poor hip mechanism going on there. So how does it affect the, the knee? Well, in Olivia's case, it was causing hyperextension of the knee. So the knee w actually was quite fine. It was just everything around it that was not doing the right job. So to just treat her knee and VMO and all that is a waste of time because that, that's just the where the, the effect is and not the cause. So basically the cause were the glute muscles were in constant stretch as were her hamstrings. So actually tightened her hamstrings up as opposed to trying to loosen them. Um, and they weren't providing her any hip stability in one leg stance. Uh, abdominals on the other end, on the other side of the pelvis, were also not in constant strength, not providing stability at the top end of the pelvis. So basically we had to isolate with a few different exercises um, for abdominals, glutes and hamstrings with the eventual goal of integrating into standing up because that's, remember, we must always get back to standing up. Otherwise, because uh, that's where she's going to be have the pain. We needed to teach her the movement skills with these new sort of improved muscles and, and, and make sure the sequence was correct. Um, that, that's the really important part in getting it right and that's the part most people miss. Um, so the solution was stretch, stretch her hips first, then strengthen the glutes and abdominals with isolated exercises and isolated glute exercise teach good movement skills. So before we try to make them strong, we just make sure the skills are correct um, encourage and encourage the stability. So using some of the TheraBand things, and you can check out all these on a lot of our other videos we've got on there about piriformis and the VMO strength. We show you in great detail how to do all these. Um, and then lastly, developing integrated strength in static and then dynamic movement. So, um, and this is a picture of Olivia doing quite a dynamic um, barbell lunge at the moment where she comes up into one leg stance so and on the side here I show you some of the exercises we might have used where we've used a ramp to build some strength uh, in around the knee first but then taking it to the ground so she can get it like in more in the glutes uh, lunges with stability and again using the ramp to encourage good movement and then taking the ramp away and doing it on the floor um, and that's pretty much where she's at now so so I hope you enjoyed um, hearing from Olivia and, and, and I hope this sort of enlightens some people as to the, that you really, if you're going to be doing stretching or exercise, you really need to have an assessment of what you're doing. Otherwise, you could be doing the complete wrong thing, all right, So, which is what was happening with Olivia in, in the early days. So um, she's only been with us for a short amount of time. She's already doing incredible, like this barbell here is 20 kilos. So, you know, and uh, last week we had some plates on there as well. So, um, yeah, so if you want to know more, go to www.noregretspt.com.au and um, get in touch with me, and, with me and I can help uh, work out a program for you if you're suffering from knee pain or something at the moment. And, uh, yeah, we'll get you on the track to, to being strong. All right, I'll see you in the next video.